have some air in it, room in it, where you can hold it. If your cows get more broke, you can do that. I mean, you can, you can get where you can hold a thousand cows up and two guys can work them if you got a couple good dogs. And uh, uh, I, like, I like to work the cattle with the least amount of people, but enough to get the job done. So I need to have some room. When it gets tight and you get them squeezed down in the corral, the stress level's going way up. And uh, just from them math, just like these girls here coming up here, the stress is way higher when they come up here like a little band of sheep than they do if they would spread out and walk up here. And so I just take that into consideration. Nice down. Stay in that eye. Get to that eye. Keep them looking. Keep your horse looking. Get to that eye. Hold that hip. When he looks in, don't let him push that hip away. You want him to concave his body. The 14 thoracic vertebrae forward. Don't fade. Don't give an inch. Don't give an inch. Make the cow yield. Open the gate.
Meanwhile, back on the farm, we have just completed about 425 acres of corn harvest as of last Thursday. Listen, as Kevin explains, part of the process. Well, tell me again what it does. We're mapping, what we're doing is we're mapping the field as we go through, we're mapping yield. mapping based on the moisture of the corn and the mass flow sensor that measures the volume going through the end of the chalk. What we should be able to do when we're all done is take the maps that Precision Partners has been giving us on the fertilizer and actually put a number to the yield. That number that we're using for theirs is just based on a, a guess. You know, we set it like how many tons we want or trying to reach. This will kind of back that up, tell us where we're at. What it's really showed us this year is stand count. Take those 27 ton in the field, do a stand count where we're at 35, or at 36,000. And those where we're in the same place, same field, that are below that, our stands aren't there. The bumper too. Sorry. <laughs> so will these maps be for every field or yes. all the corn crops? Or? Every field. You like this corn? Is it 24 or 25 now? Tons? 29. 29. 27. While this is going on, Greg is across the road gathering hay samples so he can measure hay quality. Right now I'm taking samples so that we can differentiate between our alfalfas, our alfalfa grasses, and our grasses. The demand for hay, Texas, Oklahoma, is really high. So I'm trying to get an idea of what the value is. And when I can get uh, an idea of where we're at on what we need through the year, maybe I can get a um, section of good alfalfa that we could sell down country. Side of this, they went straight down. And so we had what's known as sidewall compaction because of the type of press wheels we're using. You've got a finger side roll or, or press wheel that in a dryland situation you can use to both loosen and press at the same time. And then that allows that root to come out this way versus straight down. So this becomes an issue if we have wind and it becomes an issue of how much water the plant gets. But here's what this plant will do. Heavy dew, it'll take the water and put it right here. It runs right down this. And it'll feed itself. A light rain, light mist. And you can come in here, you can dig right here by the root. The rest of this ground is just hard and it'll be soft right here. Agronomist from Pioneer was showing me that. I was just amazed. The plant feeds itself. Takes moisture right out of the air. So say it again, how does it do that? Okay, a heavy dew. It'll run right down this light rain and it'll plant that moisture right here at the base for that root to work on. So you can come in here in the mornings and dig dig down like after heavy dew and right here the ground is wet. So the plant has basically taken what water was beaten, given it, and moved it down into that zone for it to work with. A light rain and it just runs down the stock. Who would think about that? I never did. 
So each one of these ears, when you go through and see what kind of ear count you have. We start at the bottom here. We eliminate the bottom. Here we go one, two, three, four. Pretty consistent, 24, 25. When you break it, count your kernels. Sixteen by twenty-five. Then you can go count how many plants you have in seventeen and a half feet, how many of these cobs. And then you have a equation that tells you how much your grain corn is going to yield. Which I haven't done here. I've done that at uh, Rice Ranch. Anyway, really an amazing, amazing crop. How do you think this compares with the irrigated rice ranch? Oh, well, I did a, in one spot I got an estimated 200 bushel yield and we're thinking 60 or 70. I haven't done a, an ear count here. We're just, from the agronomists I have in here, we're, from the water we've had and the stand we have, we're, we're thinking in the 60, 70 bushel range. And you think this will be mid-October? No, this year is going to be 1st of October and Rice Ranch will be mid to end of October. I mean, see we don't even have any moisture left in the kernel. So the black layer which is at the tip of this, is, has already started to develop. There's a little bit of moisture in there. So we're, we're basically there for grain corn. We're probably in the um, high 20s moisture-wise. Yeah, because that's only two weeks away. Mm-hmm. Assuming we don't get a heavy snow and wind doesn't come up, I don't start raining. I'm positive. Over in the feedlot, Trey and Ike are sorting finished cattle that will be shipped next week while NCBA is filming the action.